everybody. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Sisters podcast, where we give you our point of view. We're proud members of the Trek Geek Podcast Network, and we're so excited to bring this show to you today. I'm Tamia Harper, and I'm joined by my sisters here, Yvette blackman Tom. Hello. <laughs> Fran T. How y'all doing? And Sabrina Wood. Whoop, whoop. And not only am I joined by my sisters today, I'm joined by a really special guest because today we're going to be talking about and celebrating the amazing Belana Torres, that groundbreaking half Klingon, half human chief engineer from Star Trek Voyager, uh, played by the amazing Roxanne Dawson, whom we love. Shout out to Roxanne Dawson. Because why, Sabrina? We know you're listening. (laughs) (laughs) Roxanne (laughs) Roxanne Roxanne Uh, and so (laughs) (laughs) we are not going on the voice I'll tell you that right now no go ahead none of us are quitting our day jobs don't do that so um our guest is an amazing uh superhero by day and a super fan by night and we're so excited she's an authority on Belana Torres and all things Voyager and we have been lucky enough to nab her for our show I give you the one the only Dr. Luz I am not worthy of that introduction thank you so much um so I'm super, super excited, happy, humbled, and honored to be here with you guys. Um, so I'll just give a little bit of an intro into my Trek life yeah. and past. past. Mm-hmm. So um, I think of many, many, many people have started out with the original series. So I started out with catching reruns with my mom and my uncle, and um, we would watch it together. That's my mom and my uncle's favorite Star Trek and so <laughs> then <laughs> I think um <clears throat> excuse me then Voyager came along during my uh I like to call them my formative years so uh, <laughs> the ones that have imprinted a lot of uh values uh that I still carry today so Voyager came around when I was 13 and I was hooked um I I, I loved everything about the premise of Voyager and um, I would just say that, you know, Janeway, along with uh, Bellana kept me hooked on that show. Yeah, Bellana is amazing. And, and, you know, and I get you, I get you. When I, I was a DS9 fan myself, but when Voyager came on, I was so excited to see a woman in the chair that I watched it every week anyway, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I, but out of all the characters on, on that show, I related to Bellana the most, for sure. I, I agree, same, same here, obviously. Um, she, I think we got to, we really got to see her and Jane, we have a moment and like, even just starting off on the third episode of season one and she, you know, when she became the chief engineer and just those interactions and her not backing down and that in and of itself was kind of, um, I'm trying to find the word, but, um, like groundbreaking, I guess, in a way, you know, and mm-hmm. the fact that like even Chakotay recommended her for the position and her not being, you know, like a fellow male coworker acknowledging her strengths and saying, hey, look, you can't go wrong with this person. She'll, she's the one you want. And so just having her be in that position where she is in a, sci- in a field of um, STEM, math, engineering, and she's in charge. <laughs> Like you can't run that ship without a chief engineer. So. That's right. You know, yeah, and, um, and it's amazing that they showed that her growth that she didn't start as an as the chief, you know, and then correct. became the chief. So, you know, I want to ask um, we know that she's the, your favorite, and you're sitting there in this really cool Bellana Torres t shirt <laughs> um that now now that I want that I know is uh, I need in my closet. I wanna ask the rest of the sisters. Um, how does Belana? What are your feelings on Belana, and how does she rank in your list of characters? I'm going to start with Sabrina. Well, um, you know I love you know I love Belana because um, I wanted to be an engineer. 
I thought I was going to be an engineer when I was coming up. I was physics engineering when I started college, but <laughs> quickly dropped out. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm an accountant. I can still count the numbers, but I just couldn't, uh, you know, figure out that warp stuff. Anyway, <laughs> the warp Lana, warp. I love because <laughs> she was so smart. And I, I really love Parallax. That's the one that I think you're talking about. Yes. And yeah. I, I love the fact that, you know, she was like so young and she was brass. She was coming from the, you know, the marquee and they will, couldn't deny how smart she was. And she was just exactly. so smart all the way through. I just, I love, I love smart women. Let's just put it that yeah. way. I'm going to cut you, I'm going to mention something because that's one of the things I really love about her is just her intelligence and the fact that they wrote her as an intelligent character. Yeah. Yeah. All the way through, all the way through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fran, what about you? You got some Bellana thoughts, introductory Bellana thoughts for us? I just love the fact that they, you know, uh, had the foresight to make her the chief engineer, make the character the chief engineer on that ship, you know, and that was kind of, that was groundbreaking because, you know, we had a woman in the chair for the first time. And then you're going to turn around and do the chief engineer as a woman too. So I thought that was amazing. So I looked at it and just, you know, I'm like, I'm looking at this show. I'm, um, you know, and because those were two characters that really resonate with me from the beginning. When Chakotay was telling Janeway, you know, I, you know, I want to um, suggest Balana Torres for the chief engineer. And she was like, what? You know, you, who? You know, and you know, when they met, I didn't know what episode was it, the third episode and they met and they talked Alex. and it was sort of, I thought it was, thank you. I thought it was a mentor, sort of mentor relationship, yep. motherly relation, yep. you know, when it started off because, you know, Janeway is also smart, you know, and I'm glad she took Chakotay's, you know, advice. And I love the fact that, that she stayed, but her, her character art, really really uh changed and grew because you know she started off she never lost her her fiery her fierceness but tom i think kind of got to her and her character art just went ooh. it goes you know. miss romance we know friend <laughs> you know. loves the romance i love the romance because they were so good together <laughs> they were Especially, okay, this is not romantic. This is kind of hot. But uh, when um, she got bit by the uh, the guy with the going through the pond with part. The thing. Oh, blood fever. Blood fever. Oh, thank I you. love that one. Thank you. And Tom, Tom was such a gentleman. He didn't take advantage of it. But I loved it. Wow. I like he that was episode. getting ready to. I know. But, you know. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, dang. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? So, yeah, I I love I love the character. I love the character. First time we had seen, you know, I keep I'm, it's sounding redundant now, but first time I remember seeing a chief engineer that was a woman, you know, and and Latina. I yes. mean, even though she's That's supposed right. to be half Klingon, but she, I mean, like this, she's a she is representing the Latinas, which we okay. never saw. No, never ever ever. Okay. Right? She was Torres. Yes. That's why I, I think I was just like, Torres? My my maiden name is Martinez. So I was mm-hmm. like, she's my people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was right? Like, yeah. like, she never really, I mean, they didn't, they didn't explore that <clears throat> no. too much on the show because mm-hmm. I think they folk, which is fine, you know, they focused more on her Klingon half, which worked anyway, you know, with the, for the show, but it was still there, just the fact that her name, because the name can, a person's name means so much, has so much power. And so just the fact that they have to say her name so much, you know, it, it kind of still made that connection for me as a girl watching that show. Absolutely. Okay. I was, cause I was going to ask you about that. Cause that always disappointed me that they didn't go a little bit more okay. into uh, it, but okay. We just go say my yeah. name, say my name. Yeah. We only saw her there it more. Yeah. We we only saw the dad character I think once. Yeah, yeah we saw him only once. On and that, um, and all that. And lineage. Lineage. Yes. Lineages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a great episode. That was a fantastic episode yeah. because that really well before we get there, like I you just want to go back. Find to, out why he's that. 
Why Yvette likes Balana? Exactly. I want to go back to circle back to Yvette and find out her Balana thoughts and where Balana ranks in her well, list think, of characters. I said this before in the last one. I like Balana because of um, she's like Sabrina says she's smart, and I love a, I love the portrayal of a smart woman. Um, and Voyager had a lot of smart women um, mm-hmm. once they got rid of Kess. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I do enjoy Bolana's character because she is Latina, um, because I grew up in a very black Puerto Rican and Italian neighborhood when I was growing up. So those were my people also. So exactly. when I when I heard her last name and I knew who she was, it was like, oh, this is cool. You know, and um, I was a grown woman when when Voyager came out, but Voyager started as I said before, started in 95 when I had my first child. So I was nursing my child as Voyager was premiering. So I would watch it and nurse her. So the fact that all these smart women were on the show, um, I know has an, had an effect on the way I raised my children because all my children are in STEM. Uh, they're all beautiful, but I make sure that the smart was first. Mm -hmm. So, and I know Voyager has a lot to do with that um, because like, you know, when you see it, you're like, even as an adult, it made an impression on me. I wasn't a child. I was an adult, an older adult. I had my children as when I got older. So it still made an impression on how to, I guess, even how to raise my children. So I I do always count Balana and Janeway in that. Um, Mm -hmm. is always in that because she's still, uh, even though I'm not, uh, Latina is she still looked uh, more like me than Janeway did. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I definitely always, that's why I love Bolana because she's smart. She, she's fierce. She's, 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 she's the Latina. I know, Mm -hmm. uh, when I grew up, that's, you know, Puerto Rican women are no joke, you know? So, (laughs) and those are always my home girls. So, you know, I just felt like, Oh yeah, I I could get with her. Me and her could be cool. So yeah, exactly. That's why I like her. Yeah, yeah, she's amazing. She's amazing, and I, so I'm going to go back to the what we were talking about. Like, I mean, she is a really complex character, though, you know. And that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about how one of the things that how they wrote her. After they didn't write her as just one note, right? She wasn't always always angry you know like she didn't play like you know and as a black woman i'm forever seeing the angry black woman trope all around me right and she didn't play like the angry latina woman you know it wasn't that trope you know she had so many layers you know she was uh fiercely loyal um you know she was a big romantic and softy underneath all of that you know once tom was able to chip through that ice you know, yeah. <laughs> like we found that's out. What, Go ahead. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what um, drew me to her. You know, like you want to get to know this person, and then you kind of want to know. Well, she always had extremely high standards, right, for herself, mm-hmm. for those who are around her, for those that she lets get close to her, mm-hmm. and so you kind of wonder. Well, what is what is um like what's beneath that wall or what is what is inside that you you know are are keeping to yourself and <clears throat> that's what that's what tom was able to figure out right but she didn't give it up right away that she made him work yeah right? which, which he had to grow up was, a little before exactly. he was going to say because he was going to be right with Bolana. She, she was like he could be a, and you know I hate to say this, but you know sometimes you know what you see is what you get. But Tom did expand. <laughs> he did. He also had a lot of a lot of character growth. So yeah. she waited. She waited until he proved himself worthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, you know they were dying in space. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Finally, running out of oxygen. Finally, right. But but what I was also going to say was like, yeah, so she has all of those layers, like you said, you know, and so until you get to that core, you don't get to see that, that soft, romantic, vulnerable side of her. She's she's extremely vulnerable deep Mm -hmm. inside, right? So that's why she has all these high standards for who she lets get close to her. Um, 
And it was that com that complexity that um, it makes her an amazing character. I was reading in that um, the 25th, and I think it's the 25th anniversary Voyager book where they interviewed um, everybody, the cast and crew, that I think Roxanne put it really, she, she, she said a quote about Valana, and she says that she, I'm not going to get it word for word, but the point of it is that she kind of said, like, yeah, she's judging you, but only because she's judging herself a lot harder. Mm -hmm. And, mm. you know, and so you have to meet, you know, she's holding you to her standards. So that's, you know, she's able to judge you because she's judging herself. And, you know, in that sense, and sort of it's not really hypocritical in the sense, you know, like she's holding herself to those extremely high standards as well. Yeah. And, and I don't know, that's kind of just what, you know, she has such strong conviction, mm -hmm. you know, and then I, so she stands by them. Kind of like, you remember that episode, um, Dreadnought? Yeah, it was all, I it love was it. The one where she built that Maquiche, the, when she was with the Maquiche, she took that Kardashian <laughs> ship and like turned it on, you know, reversed right. it so that it would attack the Kardashian ship. Favorite from so episode. She, it's amazing, right? And that, that episode, it was early on. I think it was season two. Yeah, it was but, an early um, episode. Right, but even there you can see her conviction and she's just like, you know, this is my responsibility. I, I did this. I need to mm -hmm. fix it. She was so she proud was, of herself for having made this thing that was so tough to turn off. Right? But only she could turn it off because it was that bad because I did it, okay? I mean, this thing <laughs> so tough. You can't even turn yeah. this mess off. I was like, Balana, what's keep... the question? Your your strength is your downfall, girl. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, hey. She even like the, the 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 machine was like, you're telling me we're in the Delta Quadrant. This is a trick. <laughs> this, is a trick. this is not Balana Torres. Balana Torres wouldn't be in the Delta Quadrant. Right. Like, I made it too smart. <laughs> but that's 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 a that's a classic example I love. Now, what I loved about that episode, and we talked about it before, but I have my favorite is when Janeway and Balana start techno babbling to each other, oh, and you see two smart in, women um, going yeah, at it. And that they, was in that episode with the uh, with the robots, with the robots that were uh, their creators. Prototype or something. The, the prototype. Yes, mm -hmm. that's prototype. the one. Yes, that was another yes. good one. Yeah. yeah, I love that episode. You know, she, and it she, shows her to be so excited by her by what she's doing in life happy and with what she's doing and inquisitive and yep. persistent you know yeah finding the answer she doesn't give up to her detriment but okay yeah but but janeway i think even yeah. when we go back to parallax when she finally not only just listened to chicote it was when she saw how smart Bolana was and she was just yeah. riffing on it you know they were just yeah. going at they it, and, going and that, that little other. thing, yeah, it started right there, and she was like, okay, yeah, you could be the chief engineer, even though she'd already <laughs> broken that other man's nose. And... When she almost broke, you know, when she almost uh, put some uh, bone stuff in his cranium, you know, <laughs> because he, you know, I'm like, okay, Balan, I like you. Oh, you know, I like you. You know, she <laughs> said, you know, in other words, I could, I could have killed him, but I didn't. I kind of held back, you know. <laughs> <She> said, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. That's true, she could have. She could have. Yeah, she could have. He was a Miles, he was a, uh, a Miles uh, O'Brien wannabe anyway. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> 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 Carrie? Carrie? Yeah, Carrie. The one that she, yeah, the one Carrie. she yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> did he have, I mean, he did remind me of O'Brien. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Like a, like a faux O'Brien. A faux O'Brien. When, 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 when they got him at the end. Yeah, I was they, sad. He had the curly hair and everything, but, you know, he was no Miles O'Brien. We knew Miles O'Brien. He was no Miles O'Brien. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so Carrie, wanna... Carrie was all right. Carrie was all right. He was, you yeah. know, he just was not. He just wasn't Bellana. That's all. Yeah. And I love that he admitted it, and that you know he came. That yes. was the one thing I loved about Voyager, that all the men eventually they were not. They went right along with it. They were just not going to say, uh, "No, I'm going to keep doing this and just be stupid." They were like, "No, the, the women are smarter, yeah. and let's yep. just roll with it." And uh, you know, Tom Chicote. You know, everybody was just just everybody give it to did. him. Let's yeah. not even argue. 
And I, I think I want to give a shout out to um, Jerry Taylor that. Um, oh, yeah. The producer who helped create this show. Because I liked it from the time when they when they said, which I still don't understand why they address women officers as sirs. And Jane Wade told them from the beginning that she was not a sir. You either said yes, Captain, or yes, ma'am to me. And but they still do it on other shows, but they didn't do it on Voyager. So I'm like, I remember okay. that scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Shout shout out to, to those mm-hmm. writers. That's right. That's the right. Creators. Mm-hmm. Is that true, we bet? Is that what really happens? Sir versus ma'am in the military? No. But I think I think it's moving towards that way. Um, so it's genderless. I, I don't think it's going to be stir. I think you're just going to say the person's uh, rank. Right. Okay. Because I think it's going to try to be, you know, we're trying to move into it. Stop identifying people as gender. gender. I, think. I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon, but eventually it'll have to. But I don't think it's going to be sir. I think it, you just call people by their rank. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir yes, and ma'am was it. easy because you didn't have to if you couldn't see it you know everybody's a sir or a ma'am if you can't see the rank yeah. you know uh-huh. and everybody's a sergeant if you don't see a um everybody's a sergeant everybody's ma'am yes ma'am or yes sir when you see somebody in a uniform until you can really see what their rank says because everybody should know the ranks mm-hmm. uh, but you know i think eventually it'll it'll go to something like that yeah but I like the fact that Jane Way told them she was not a sir. Well, that was I, I her preference. That. I don't, yeah, but I, but I thought it was I thought it was something because they they never addressed it. That was the only time they addressed it was when she said she was not a sir. And I think it was yeah. in like the first or second episode. I'm not mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, it was caretaker definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was the Paris. Paris was having issues. He didn't know what to call her or whatever. <laughs> Tom starting so, up right from the very beginning. Okay, so he, was, All right. he was the one who always said yes, ma'am. If that's his classic thing. That's right. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. But I want to know what you think is Balana's um, greatest character trait asset, and what do you think is her greatest liability? Ooh. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay, that's that's a challenge. Um, I do think that her greatest asset is her, I would say, I think I said it already, but I'll, it's her, her, her conviction. You know, the fact that she, she has very strong opinions and she stands by them. Like I remember there was an episode, I'm not going to remember the name, but it was one where the captain was like, you know, um, how long will it be? Or I need these, you know, engines, whatever, by in four hours. And she's like, "No, I can get it by tomorrow." Tomorrow. And then, oh, she. And then the captain was like, "Well, are you sure or something?" And Bolana's like, "I don't exaggerate. If I tell you it's tomorrow, it's tomorrow." Uh-huh. You know, like she. She was like, "I, I know what I'm doing. I know how long it's gonna take. I'm not messing around." So she, you know, she has strong, strong values. She stands by them, and she follows through. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that that's what, it's kind of like, yeah, you know what? I just made a little connection in my brain. It's kind of like, it's kind of like someone's word and honor, right? Like you can count on her. Yeah. You can mm-hmm. count on what she tells you. Um, and her greatest weakness, I think would be kind of her, kind of her pride, you know, mm. or her, or her, I don't know that I would say, maybe pride is not the right word, but her, her, her fear to to come across as weak or mm-hmm. vulnerable, because mm-hmm. I think that that prevents her from maybe making more connections and relationships that she probably could have and further develop because she was scared of getting hurt. Mm-hmm. So I think that mm-hmm. the, that's her greatest weakness. That's good. If, Sabrina, what about yeah. you? I think I think I'm gonna go with what you were saying though, Luz. I think um well her greatest absolutely her greatest asset I think is again her passion. She is very passionate about what she's doing, about people she loves, about you know what's happening. But and I but I think it's almost 
the same thing is to, to her detriment too. She's she's overly. Yeah. She sometimes she can't control it. She can't stop it. But like you were saying, pride. It, we will go back to prototype. It was you know she was just so proud. She wanted to make that thing turn on, and she was just so gonna do it, even though yeah. people were warning her not to do it. But she just wanted to be able to see if she could do it, and it exactly. was that pride that got her. So she was always sort of like you know, oh I can get this. I can fix this. I can handle this. I can do it. And, you know, sometimes she can't and and she learns a real hard way that -hmm. she can't do it. Like Day of Honor, that was a really interesting one. She was going through some stuff there. Mm -hmm. But what she could withstand, she almost killed herself, you know. But anyway, that's what I think. No, you mean Extreme Risk? Extreme Risk, yes, that's right. Extreme Risk. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was an episode. Exactly, again, again. I mean, that, that has a, a lot of different undertones too. But again, that ties to the vul- not being vulnerable. She doesn't want to. She doesn't want to reach out to help. And I mean, I can understand it. You know, we mm-hmm. can. We all want to have this. You know, maybe outer appearance that we want to maintain, especially with people who maybe you would say are not one of your inner circle. Mm-hmm. So I get that, but I feel like that sometimes is, like we say, it can be your can be to your detriment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yvette, what about you? You got thoughts? Um, I think Bolana's my favorite thing about Bolana, her best character trait is the fact that she's Klingon, I think. Um, all those things that you guys said about honor and you know how she holds herself to the highest mm-hmm. that's Klingon stuff. Yeah. Well at least what Worf says Klingons are. <laughs> um so I I I think she's very Klingon without even realizing that she is very Klingon. And um, I like, I like that that dynamic of her, the way they wrote that. Um, unfortunately, her greatest liability is her insecurity, um, which is pretty much what you all were saying. But I always think about the fact that Balana was a great student at Starfleet Academy, and she decided she wasn't good enough, or she yeah. decided that someone was. They were they were talking about her because she was half human half uh, Klingon. Um, I know sometimes I get the books and the series mixed up. So I can't remember if they talked about how she was a great um, sprinter. You know, she was a great athlete at Starfleet Academy. And, you know, she was, you know, she left all those things because of the things in her mind, her insecurities. Um, You know, there were professors who didn't want her to leave that she thought hated her. And they were just, they were, they were okay with the challenge. She just didn't, she just didn't get it, you know? Yep. So, and I think that just makes a great, they fleshed out her character so well. And uh, I don't think a lot of people understand how, how well they did that. So, you know, I like that. I yeah. like, I like, I like the fact that they did that for her character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I will shout out, I will shout out to Roxanne. Cause in the, um, in the book, I think she, you know, she went into the, in the 25th um, anniversary Voyager book. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. They have a section, they have a section, uh, each each actor has a section about, to talk about their character. And she goes into how, she, you know, she, she would have encounters with the writers and she would say, you know, I, I really want to, this to flow. You know, like she was a really big um, backer for Extreme Risk. Mm. So she, so... I think she played more of a role than maybe some of the other actors did. That early director, that early director yeah. was coming out. And yeah. yeah, yeah. And how their character was was formed. So mm-hmm. shout out mm-hmm. to her. Thank you, Fran. Thank you, <laughs> Fran. What are your thoughts on on her strengths and weaknesses? Well, I think uh, her strength, of course, that she was smart and she was fierce. However, opposite from Yvette, I think that she did not embrace her Klingonness that much. I thought she was there was some self hate going on because of the Klingonness. Mm-hmm. I I really do. I don't think she really, you know, like wholeheartedly embraced it with the episode they when they separated them with that bedall- those medallion people that Basically. separated. So you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Thank you. And also all the way all the way into the seventh season. She wanted to change the child. Remember, she wanted to take all the Klingon out of her baby. She wanted the baby to be 
Yes. And she wanted the baby to be fully human and not. So I think, I think that was her, uh, I think she had some, self, the character had some self hate going on in there. Cause when she wanted to change that baby, I'm like, come on. You know, I, I thought it was sad too. I'm like, you haven't embraced that part. But she, I thought she was ashamed of her Klingonness. Although she had all the attributes, well, what Walk would say, the attributes of being a Klingon. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I thought. I, I didn't like that. I didn't like that about her. I didn't like that about the character. I mean, I, I would agree with you. I mean, I think that there's, um, and that's actually what part of my answer was going to be. I think that her, for me, one of her greatest strengths is her fearlessness. You know, um, and not just in the typical way, like, uh, like uh, she's not afraid to get in a fight. But what I mean is like her fearless, she has fearless thinking and fearless. Yeah. She's fearless in her thought. And, mm -hmm. and, and then, and therefore in what she attempts to do in this world, she doesn't think um, I might, this might not succeed and it doesn't hold her, it, you know, and therefore it holds her back. Like she thinks like, oh, there's a possibility over here. Let's try this. Like she just jumps in. You know, she just jumps in and tries to get to the solution and figure it out, you know, which I love. You know, she doesn't get stopped by her fear. Um, but I, I was going to say that I think that, you know, a lot that under that other part of that insecurity that we've all talked about, the underpinning of that is the self-hatred, you know, and that that stems like right from her childhood. And that when we were talking about um, oh, yeah. watching lineage, you know, and um <laughs> we were talking about watching lineage and seeing her dad in that, in those hurtful words that her dad said to her, you know, um, you know, all these years later, she's still that little girl inside, you know, whose daddy basically told her that, you know, she was too, like, he didn't want to be around her, you know, of course, you're going to start to, you're going to carry oh, that, you know, you're going to carry yeah. that. And that's going to, that wound is going to fester in so many ways. And of course she's going to start to hate the thing that he had come to resent and hate the thing that he couldn't deal with, with her, which was her Klingon heritage, mm -hmm. you know? And I really, but I, I, I think it was really interesting. Like, do you think that the writers were consciously trying to talk about growing up in these different cultures, you know, or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you think they, they had an agenda that they were executing through Bolana's character? Because that's kind of how I see it, because they touch on all of these things. And that self-hate, that's so powerful. And when you get to that episode um, with, uh, oh, what's it called, where she wants to change her baby. Um, Lineage. 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 That's that one's that is the same episode. Sorry, it's lineage. Uh, you know, I forgot she's doing the flashbacks throughout yeah, the episode. The you know, that episode was so powerful. And I heard some other podcasters talking about this episode. And of course, they were, you know, cisgendered white males, right? Who have never been other in their lives. It did not see what was going they couldn't see her point of view you know and oh, and i God. get that you know I, I i mean i understand how they wouldn't understand yeah. it but, but they've never been in a position where people are consistently telling them that what they are is less than what they are is okay. evil what they are is bad you know and and so they i don't they couldn't understand how she could do that to her child right and yeah. i'm not condoning it either I'm just saying that I understand the place of where that came from because one of the things that I had to learn to overcome throughout my life was not hating myself because growing up in a majority white neighborhood and going to majority white schools, everything about me was wrong to them. And I was constantly told that there was something bad about me or something wrong with me. And then I saw it on the, it was reinforced on the news. You know, black people are the one who get, who do crimes, right? If, if, yeah. if, if a crime happened and it was a, a white person doing it, they would never call out his race, right? If a crime happened and a black person perpetrated, you, you always knew that it was a black person, you know? And that's just how it was raised. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and to be right. And, and, and so that's something that you have to consciously fight against that infiltrating and festering in your life, you know, and yeah. not, not believing the hype. Um, go ahead, Sabrina. 
And I, th I think that lineage scene where they have the flashback where the cousins are all supposed to be playing. Mm -hmm. And I think it was really important the way they wrote that scene because it wasn't that the boy who was her cousin, he was making, he put the, uh, the worm on her sandwich and he said, oh, Klingons like to eat raw food or something like that. He, he was making a joke. He thought it was funny. And he's not even realizing that it hurt her to the core. And I think that that was really cool that they didn't make him this boy that was obviously mean and nasty to her. He, they made him a boy that was making a joke, thinking he's funny, but not seeing that this is hurtful. really hurting her. And like, you know, why are you doing this? You're being a real jerk. And he's, he's, and then he even looked like he didn't realize that it could be, that it was hurting her that bad. But, you know, it's something that you do all the time, every day, you think it's funny, you think you're a joke, but you don't get that you're a pain in the ass. Oh, that, that episode, that Say it again. I said, ass a couple of people that I come in contact with. I had a, a coworker actually call me a girl. Ooh, We're not going to go into what happened, but he didn't call me a girl anymore. And I was always Miss Fran from then on, from what I told him. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that, that episode, I'm not, you know, that's now that you bring it up, I don't, I never really thought about whether or not the writers were conscious about what they were doing. I'd have to go back and, I'm curious to see, like, go back and see if there was a specific writer for most of the time. What's his Wait, name? Renee so? Echeverria? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think he knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, he had to know, but that episode hits on so many levels. So many levels. I was telling um, Mia that um, my, I, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but literally the, the, the coincidences between Balana's life and my life are kind of scary just because there's so many. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason why throughout the years of Voyager, I was like, I, you know, I grew up with just me and my oh, mom okay. uh -huh. and then my grandmother and my aunt. So it was, we were all women together. Mm. And then I'm not of mixed heritage in the sense that both of my parents are Dominican, but I grew, you know, one, I grew up in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, which I didn't really fit. It was kind of almost the opposite of you, Camille, because most of my neighbors were African-American. And so I didn't fit. I was kind of the other in that sense. Mm -hmm. But then, you, but then you have the also the dichotomy of being a child of immigrants, where you're not really American, mm -hmm. but you're not really, you know, from the country where your parents are from. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of identity questions mm -hmm. that you could have, and I feel like lineage really hit on that because whereas. Um, like I said, I didn't have the, the two different heritages. You could kind of understand where I understood sort of where Belana was having, where she was kind of like, I have these two sides of me and I don't really fit in either one. I'm mm -hmm. in a middle. And then I started asking myself also, do we think that Belana truly believed what she told the doctor? Because the, 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 the reason she told the doctor that she wanted to take out the Klingon DNA was for medical reasons, preventative right. medical reasons, right? right? The same way you would take out your appendix, the same way you do genetic modification to fix the curvature. And so then I was rewatching it and thinking about it, and I was like, do we, does she really believe that? Or that's just the lie she's telling them, right? Like, that's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking to get them to be able to go with it. But it, there's just so many things in that episode. And then I think the, one, the, th the, the thing that hit the nail on the coffin was the fact that her father couldn't handle her mother's cling on this, right? Right, right. And then, and then that, that was it. Because then she says when she's having her, her breakthrough with Tom at the end, she's like, and then I never saw him again. Right. And then it never. was like, your heart breaks. Your heart breaks. Yes, right? but then, yes. But then I have these conversations with my, with, I have a lot of, I have a group of, of girlfriends who are my like Balana and Paris friends. Hi friends. They know who <laughs> they are. <laughs> um, and what was I saying? Oh, shoot. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Your father left and never came back. Never saw yeah, yes, yes. Thank you, Sabrina. So we were like, you know, this is obviously more, more of us being cerebral, right? Because we like to delve into these kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. But where would, you know, she needed to have, I wish she would have had stronger adults in her life mm -hmm. 
to reiterate, you know, that, that, that she was worth, worth it, you know, yeah. and not to develop this self hate. And that's kind of where I wish it, cause I will, I will go a little bit into some of my personal history here, but I attribute the fact that I had so many of my, um, my adult family members, you know, emotionally supporting me throughout my childhood that I never got into that point where I blamed myself for the actions of other adults. Mm, mm -hmm. So you, you blamed know? yourself for the actions of other adults. Wow. And you know kids I mean? do that. Kids do that. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah we do, so it, we do so, it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so like Delana my, it, did it. Like, sorry, like, like kids with their parents, like, just like the Lana, like situation, but parents getting divorced, yeah. you know, and the kids, yeah. the kids think it's their fault that, mm -hmm. you know, if I was better if I ate my dinner, if I didn't do this, yeah. you mm -hmm. exactly. if I wasn't okay. Klingon, you know, if you like grew up mother. in a, exactly. growing up in an alcoholic household, you know, like if I, you know, if I don't do this, maybe this won't happen. If I do this, maybe this won't happen So that. Yeah. Kids, kids take on a, an awful lot of responsibility. The sponges, they are sponges, and they take yep. on that. And as a little girl, her character took it on because when she looked at Tom and said, I never saw him again, my heart was breaking, you know, because mm -hmm. I can relate, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But then that, that also, like the, that moment, it ties in so nicely, like you, you know, into her character arc. Like they did it, I don't know, they did it so nicely. I, don't, I really don't know if that was intentional or not. But it I explains, it, it has to be, right? Because it was, yeah. it fits so nicely. This, it explains so much of why she is the way she is. Mm -hmm. right. 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 And if you don't get that, then I can't help you. I mean, but <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, we had to wait, what, like six seasons, seven seasons in order to get that, you know? Why she but, I mean, a chip on her shoulder. But thank yeah, God exactly. we got it because it totally yeah, rounded cool. out her character. Yep. You know, and it made, like you said, it made so much sense. You know, Yvette, do you have any thoughts about, um, <laughs> about lineages that we haven't, that we haven't hit? Because I remember in another show, this show came up or, or, or off, off mic conversation, this show came up and we had the, the sci-fi sisters. We had a lot of things to say about this, this episode. We always have a lot to say. I but, know, right? Um... <laughs> No, I, I think we, I think you guys hit on it. I mean, all of the basics, we all have that point in our lives where we question, you know, our lineage um, and how it fits into the uh, majority and how we want to, you know, kind of not play on that. So I, I think you guys hit all of those buttons. Okay. Oh, what I liked about the episode was this is the one where I thought Tom really came through. Because he was he, he was a rock he, in this one. Yes. And I was always sort of like, I can't see Valana and Tom. I was always sort of like, Valana and Tom, I mean, they were kind of cute, whatever. Oh, but this sorry. one, he won me over. We, we can have another episode on why I think Tom and Valana are perfect. And I will, I will win you over. <laughs> and, and the two actors had chemistry. They, they actually really did. had chemistry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think. What else? Yeah. yeah, no, Tom really did. Um, he was a whole grown up Tom in this episode. He yeah. was, he did some real man manning, in, you know, like yeah. real man manning in, in this episode. Like he wasn't, you know, he was, he was comforting. He would, did not denigrate her. He didn't scoff, right. you know, mm -hmm. eventually. He didn't scoff. He was just always maintained his concern for her. You know, my favorite, one of my favorite lines was, you know, they're walking down the hallway and he's like, how are you this morning? She's like, da, 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 is that what you mean? And he's like, no, I meant, how are you this morning? Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, snap. Love that. Okay. Right. No, no, bring no. Her, bring I, it back. I love Tom Paris. I love Tom Paris. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, so I, I'm going to go take it back to lineage. The mm -hmm. other thing that you were and, and me and Tari Mia were talking about is when she had the holographic version of her daughter. Right. And then when they took off, like we were talking about the ideas of a beauty. God, when they okay, cause did you notice her they hair? Made her they made her blue. 
they made her blonde exactly her hair got lighter that was i was like wow they are really hitting the nail on the head here like yeah. not only could did she is she removing the ridges, the ridges. She also made her hair lighter and i loved how they slipped that yeah. in there and i was like they did it word did they did they give her blue eyes i can't remember no, they. I, I don't think they changed. I don't think they changed her eye color, but they but did. You know, Tom, the hair. Tom was blonde. She was gonna have right, more right. Tom. I was just. I was just going to say that. But Tom, Tom was blonde. blonde. Right, but, oh. but, but her, that's right. how they got away with it. Right. But, yeah. But, I mean, not yeah. now. So, so that you have to realize that 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 scene was for a lot of different people. You know, that hit a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. So exactly. Exactly. I think the writers were awesome with that because yeah. it hit us. We saw that as, oh, beauty has to be that, you know. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else who didn't feel that way were like, oh, well, Tom is blonde. So he he finally looked, this is the human side. That, yeah. It wouldn't take, yeah, that, that's exactly. how he's becoming, so you're taking the ridges out. So she's becoming human. Mm -hmm. So she has to have, she has to look like Tom. She looks like but we Tom. all know that's, that's bullshit. All, so. Right, right. We all know that, that that was a whole coded scene, right? It, right. It was, yes, it was yes, complete yes, BS. Yes, 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 yes. You know? Yeah, it was for two different people. Okay, I may have, I may have seen when they did that. That was my first thought, guys. I don't mean guys, but sisters. Mm -hmm. That yeah. Tom was blonde, and they had completely removed all the Klingon from mm -hmm. from this child, so the child looked just like his father. But see, but okay, that didn't make sense. Something because I mean, it, because I because Belana, they were acting like Belana is not half human. Like her yes. dark hair okay. doesn't. Yeah. Her dark hair doesn't necessarily have to come from her Klingon side. Her dark hair come from her father, which if we go by the memories, it did. Like her dad yeah. had dark hair, you know? Right. So, so the point being like, why, if you're just removing the Klingon blood, her hair color should not be affected by that. But I, okay. I see you, it you a know? little bit differently. I see it a bit My hair is recessive, so it wouldn't come out right away anyway. If it's like it's like Yvette said, you know, like that 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 scene works in two for two different sets of people. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. We see it in two different ways, but um, I just love that episode. Well, that's what I, I love. Do think, sorry, I was gonna say I do think that after that episode, the rest of the season, uh, it's that that episode is kind of like a line. It's a demarcation, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like after that, maybe because it was towards the end and they felt like they had to wrap up some storylines. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like we see a difference in how she approaches her Klingon heritage after that episode. Yeah. It's a bit different. Yes, it is. Yes. Which right. I was really, She's which really I, exploring it now after that. Because yeah. then we okay. have, um, you know, prophecy comes up after right. that. And I, that. The, I, I think <laughs> I prophecy that. is <laughs> one of the <laughs> deepest ones ever. That yes. was a generational Klingon ship that was out there yes. for it was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and then her daughter. And the baby is God. The baby is God. The baby is God. Right. The baby's God. Well, I just want to say before we get to that one, like the um, I wish that I had seen that change in character, like you were talking about, Luce, about how she was approaching her Klingon ness yeah. after the barge of the dead. Yeah. Like in season I, I six. You. Like because that was such a pivotal moment and of reconciliation between her and her mother and, and her Klingon side and her culture. And I really, you know, and I was really hoping that we'd see like, yes, like we see her standing proudly in that Klingon right. heritage. Right. But it didn't, it sort of back, like then we get yeah. an episode, you know, in season seven, we get lineage. They forgot, I think they, they forgot about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, but that would have been the ideal. That would have been the ideal place to put it. I don't think they forgot about it. I think it was very realistic. I mean, you could, you could make a breakthrough, but if that stuff is there since you were like, what, 10, five, 10, I mean, yeah. how do you, one, one episode is not going to break that. So no, that's true. You know, I think, I think that was very realistic that they went back to it and it would come back up when she got pregnant and had to deal with it again have yeah, to deal right. with it was the a trigger. Whole, just to deal mm -hmm. the trigger for her childhood yeah. again and this is what maybe her daughter is going to go through and the fact that tom would leave her because that was the biggest deal is that if the baby looked cling on was tom gonna leave like her father left right, right. so that you know so yeah i think that was i think that was perfect 
that they went back to that and didn't, oh, that's move, a total. You, didn't move past you, it. You know what else I liked about that episode that was kudos for Tom, because I think it is very hard for people to, um, to have to voice their trauma, mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. that Tom picked it up. You know, mm -hmm. she's telling the story, and then he said, oh, uh -huh. I'm not yes. going to leave you. Yeah. Like, he connected the dots without having to have her, um, you know, specifically Voices. say, this mm -hmm. is what I'm scared of, because that's, that's very challenging for people to do. Sometimes you don't even have the, you know, it's buried so deep that you don't make those connections yourself, even though it's clearly obvious to some people, but I like that, too. Yeah. yeah, that was it. That's when he won me. That's when he got me. I was like, yeah. all right, Tom's yeah. got seven, the whole, Tom's seven got seasons, it. Seven seasons later, right, Sabrina? <laughs> you went through yep. it. I was, I was just, Tom Paris. She was going through it. <laughs> As Captain Proton, I was just like, what, Delana, why are you with this Captain boy? Proton. Come oh, on. Look, I, come on, don't. I love the Captain Protons. I love oh, those it was episodes. Funny, but okay. No, it remind me of when Worf told uh, what's the the little the little Dax? I can't remember her name. Uh, Esri. Esri. Yeah, wait, little Dax. <laughs> toys. Why would you like them? And that's the same thing as as Tom. They're all a bunch of kids playing with toys. <laughs> hashtag little hashtag little Dax. <laughs> Well, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> but we have a theory, my my um my Valana Harris friends, that Valana we don't ever see Valana's the only character that we don't see doing the Captain Proton because she's like I'm not doing that. No, <laughs> I'm right, <laughs> right. No, no, is not there's doing no it. way, no fan, <laughs> no. All the fans were like, no. We can't. She ain't doing it. Everybody <laughs> went in there but Bellana. She's like, she's, okay. Yeah, like, no, no, it no, was better you. if she married the guy. She ain't going into the place. <laughs> she's like, take that mess to the holodeck. Right. Unlike <laughs> Keiko, who had all of those toys in her house. <laughs> all over the living room. <laughs> Messing up her living room. She left too, though, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's oh, funny. Man, you guys got me. Well, one thing I do want to I do want to say is that the the thing that I really did love about the relationship that she had with Chicote, and they did it a couple of times, but they never really gave it a lot of um, you know, a lot of a lot of lines or scenes, but it, it was there, and I loved it that they were just really tight, you know. And I know he was her superior officer, even when they were marquee. He was the mm -hmm. superior officer. And as we were saying earlier, that she always held people to the, her high standard. And Yvette, if you know some beta uh, book stuff, you know, just throw it in there. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm just I, laughing I just, at your Boston accent. That's all. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> Is it coming out a lot? Is the it really twanging? The Marquis. The Marquis. The Marquis. The Marquis. The Marquis. <laughs> the Marquis. <laughs> Say it loud. I'm Say Boston proud. and I'm proud. That's right. <laughs> so the my key. Uh, <laughs> I like I I love that. I love that they were so he was he had her back all the time, you know, and like we were talking about extreme risk and, mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. And I know these people have this thing where they always have like fan favorite things where they wanted to see them get together. But I said that would so I, oh, no. No, that no. would suck so hard. No. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad we're all in agreement with that because yeah. I, I saw him. He was like, he was like her big brother. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, he had her man. back, man. Totally. You know. Totally. Yeah, like he, he, he kind of took her under his wing when they were in the Maquis. Mm -hmm. He, you know, because I think she was, she, she had to have been pretty young because she dropped out of the academy, True. and then I think she, she went to the Maquis right after that. So yeah, she was <clears> too young. For I, she how, was way young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I see it, you know, like a like a big brother, little sister relationship. And you see that throughout episodes in Voyager. Right. And I'm right. glad that they didn't go that route. Oh, yeah. Because she never she never talked to him like he was a superior officer. I think one or no. twice, once or twice, he had to snap her back and tell her who he yeah, was. They, yeah. But yeah. she always sort of came at him like, I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to do this, and that's what about Chicote. And he would be like, yeah. uh, <laughs> listen, lieutenant. Listen. <laughs> what a <laughs> The first uh, couple of episodes, she pronounced his name differently. Did y'all notice that? She called him Chakote. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm yep. like, okay, so they changed. Maybe she's from Boston too. <laughs> 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 
Ah. Ah. <laughs> 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 I want to say it. That's the Klingon pronunciation. Right? <laughs> I make it so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe from Copley Square. She might be from Copley. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that was like an example in Day of Honor when, when, when Chakotay told her that Seven was going to be working with her in engineering and she gave him a piece of her mind and he oh. was like, um, this is, I'm not asking you. <laughs> Right. right. This is yeah. <laughs> he just let her go <laughs> on and like, oh wow, yeah. really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Her whole, her whole yeah. You know. Yeah, so anyway, was... that's what he said. So anyway, uh, this is yeah. gonna <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. And then she, then she had to be like, okay, yes, sir. <laughs> I guess I'm working with Seven. That was an interesting relationship. The relationship that was and Seven. That was because it talked about like it really hit on all this uh, <laughs> female, <laughs> this this uh, competition between women mm-hmm. thing, yes. you know, and, and yes. jockeying for space. And I better let Fran say something because she looked like she's about to have a seizure. Fran over is there. gonna have a f- yeah. What's freak out. What is happening? I thought, I thought I was hoping, just hoping that we would get through this without bringing up. Bobby Boar. Uh-uh. I just to get through Without it. Without bringing up I mean, seven. Yeah, but listen, I think I have the same. I think I have the same opinion as you. I can tell. You know, I, I just, think I, do. I just, I just wanted to be about. I mean, I know you know, homegirl is a, you know, she was a whatever. But I just didn't want her to be uh, <laughs> with. Uh, but the problem is that we can't erase her out of the history. <laughs> she's there. She's there. We don't need to erase, don't need to erase her. She's there. And, uh, and, and she came in. But she came in and just overshadowed her and her. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay, so. And her. All that stuff came in and just tried to, you know, just overshadow. And I wanted to get through this without I, really I know. focusing I know. on her. If but this was also, on YouTube, you people would know that Fran was having an absolute meltdown Fran at the nine. mention of Seven of, of Nine. Of Seven of Nine. Second yeah. of all, we all know. Barbie Borg. I thought there was Brazil. a bee. Yeah. I, I, thought there was, I thought there was a bee, too. <laughs> I thought it was like, is she fighting a bee? <laughs> It was a Borg, not a bee. It was oh, a Borg. A Borg. Barbie, Barbie Borg. Borg. Don't forget yeah. Barbie Borg. Yes. Barbie but, Borg. But I feel, I feel the same way in the sense that I feel like it overshadowed a lot of um, Balana. And we all know why, why, why she was introduced, right? But I always right. tell myself, I'm like, I'm like, this doesn't make sense because Balana could have done that. No and joke. And Balana could have done that. And, you know, and so I, I kind of struggle when I think about the interactions between the two of them. Mm-hmm. And on one hand, I'm kind of happy that there aren't that many. Mm-hmm. Right? They're, they're, not, <laughs> right. they're not that many because um, Seven was always with Janeway or doing something else. Which I also yeah, kind to of put her ass in isometric, which is isometric, yeah, isometric. Yeah, yeah. 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 they mm-hmm. give her another room, right? Because Balana's gonna yeah. kill her. Because Balana's gonna tear her throat out. Astrometrics, yeah, yeah. Astrometrics. Help. like in the warp room. That one, astrometrics. <laughs> that yeah, room. what you said. Yeah, that. You know what, what it... scene I love? You know what scene I love? The, the interaction between the two of them that I love and is my favorite, and I'm so happy that it's in there, is when Stefan is trying to observe Tom and Valana's relationship because she wants to know more. And so and Seven goes, Valana's like, how do you know when we're having intimate relations? And then Seven of Nine says, there's no one on section nine, deck 12, that does not know when you're having intimate relations. And then Valana's like, I'm about to break your nose. I think she does say something like that. She's like, Klingon breaks nose. Or nose. And I was like, hey, I'm so happy they put that there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, up in my book was, again. That was boy can hang. <laughs> that was something. That was really something. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, because I know we're coming into the home stretch here for, uh, for this episode on our dearly beloved Bellana. Um, So I'm gonna say, I'll ask you if you were rec- going to introduce Bellana 
to somebody who didn't know Balana, and didn't know this character, which episode would you recommend for a newbie? And Luce, I'm going to hold you to the end. Okay. I'm going to start because I know you have I know you have opinions on this. Uh, Sabrina. Oh well, after we going to uh, Astrometrics, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think my favorite my favorite. <laughs> What room is that? I don't know what room that is. But definitely. <laughs> anyway, forget it. Um, don't call. Listen, don't write to the Sci-Fi Sisters about that, please. That I was corrected. But um, <laughs> my favorite one is actually now, and that is only really recently, is Barge of the Dead. Only because it touches on so much Bellata stuff. It talks about her mother, which I know we're all talking about her father being the one that sent her off and made her so insecure and all this, his leaving. But it's really her mother. If they just were like, okay, we have to look at this relationship. She didn't speak to her mother for 10 years. And then, you know, this yep. whole thing. Plus, she was rocking that Klingon uniform. I yes, she ask, was. Come girl. on now. Yes, she was. Did they was. do a little, you know, snip, snip here and tuck, tuck there to make that thing look like she looked better in that thing than anybody else oh, ever? Yeah. <laughs> Larissa Bator, uh-uh, no. Balana Torres. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even have the Got whole cut out, nothing. She didn't even need that mess. She nah, was she fierce that in that mess. thing. So anyway, that's my favorite one. I love it. No okay. pool window. Lana. Well, the, your turn, Yvette. Juggernaut. Mm. Yes. Mm. I love that one. That's that's just she just signs the hell out of that whole episode. I, I'm yeah. all for that. I'm all for that. That was that that's when I think of Alana, that's what I think of. So mm -hmm. that one. Fran, you got one? I think when she um got the job of chief chief engineer. I really, I don't know the name of it. The, oh, I think it was third episode Parallax. or second. Parallax. Thank you. When she actually got the job of chief engineer because she was the smartest. She was yeah. the most fierce. And I, I really liked that. And I think that defined her character from then on. Mm -hmm. For the most part, as far as Voyager, her place on Voyager was noted. I like that. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go, uh, my with prototype because I love that episode so much. And yeah, as Yvette said, she science the hell out of that episode, you know? Oh, yeah. uh, but then she, then you also get to see her um, really like struggle, finesse her way out of that situation. Like it just has all her best character traits on, on display, which, which I love, you know, and that, and the fact that that, that episode was really like, that was a acting tour de force for Roxanne Dawson. Like that was her, that episode rested on her shoulders and she just carried the whole thing. Yeah. 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 So Luce, what you got? That's hard. Did we take all of them? Yeah. Maybe we took them all. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no I, I would say if I'm just going with my instinct, whatever comes to my brain first, because I usually trust that, whatever just comes out to my brain, I usually trust. I would say I'm stuck. I'm I'm honestly stuck between two, two episodes. Um, Dreadnought, mm -hmm. because I feel like it's our first introduction to how a well not our first because we we see it before, but it's an example of how smart she is, how determined she is, and how loyal she is. <clears throat> the other episode that I really wanted to show, I think Faces. I think Faces mm -hmm. does not get Ooh, as much credit yeah. as it should. Yeah, mm -hmm. people really- I, I agree. People don't um, don't like that episode as much. Or I don't know, that's not the right word, but it's not. it doesn't get as much credit. And I think that that's a very good introduction to the her inner conflict. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would say, watch those two, if if you want to intro to Balana. <laughs> <laughs> And if, I mean, of course, there's always this podcast that will give you a really good yeah. intro to of Bellana. Course. You know? <laughs> and the fact that I said the wrong, did I say the wrong episode and no one said, no one corrected me? You guys yeah, you okay. said Juggernaut. I, I said Juggernaut. Oh, yeah. That is amazing, too. What the hell is Juggernaut? 
Juggernaut is the one. Listen, Juggernaut is the one where they're like a, it's like in the fifth or sixth episode where they have that alien where they they do the waste and they collect their waste and they throw it out in other people's backyard. Yeah, that's not the one I was talking about. No, but there she's so kick ass in that episode, Yvette. She is. Because she, she has is. to go and they send her in the shit. And she has to confront the guy because she's like, why aren't you taking responsibility for your stuff and you're just throwing it in other people's stuff? And then she attacks that zombie the guy with the radiation. Yeah. The Malons, yeah. that's the guy. Uh-huh. And she yeah, attacks yeah. The, radi- the guy who got radiation poisoning. Yeah. And she's like... That's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one, but that's not the one I was talking but about. Yeah, you, not you, meant, you meant Dreadnought, right? I meant Dreadnought. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I, you know what? I think I saw Juggernaut this morning. Maybe that's why I said it, because I saw it. <laughs> that's, an awesome, that's an awesome episode, too. Not to mention, Roxanne, again, looks really awesome in her tank top with, like, grease all over her. In I know, head. right? I love those tank tops. <laughs> I know, right? So I want to thank... Luz, for coming on and talking Bolana with us. This has been so much fun. And we're really ecstatic that you're here. Do you have, uh, is there any socials where you want people to, if if they want to talk Trek with you? Yeah. So you guys, I'm on Twitter. I'll say it. It's Luz X-Ray MD. L-U-D is in zebra, X-R-A-Y. M is in Mary and D is in dog. Awesome, because you're the doctor with the most S. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm so, I'm so happy we connected and we made it happen. Yay. I know. Yay. Yay. And, I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, friend, for my error. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> are you talking about? Are we talking about Bobby Boy? No, we're not. No, we no, we weren't. No, we did not. Nope. I, I, I didn't say that. No, nope. oh, sure did. On another, on another podcast, we could talk right? about it. And so, hey, Yvette, if people want to let us know which one is their favorite Balana episode, where would they do that? You can find us at scififisters.com. That's S-Y-F-Y-S-I-S-T-A-S dot com. Join us on the mothership. That's M-U-T-H-A-S-H-I-P. And the Sci Fi Sisters Book Club, both on Facebook. Download the Trek Geeks Network app where you can find us and our family of podcasts on the Trek Geeks Network. On Instagram, sci fi.sisters. And we're also on the Twitter at Sci Fi Sisters. <laughs> After listening to this podcast, please rate us and write a review. We may just read it on an upcoming episode. Thank you. And I just got to give a real, a, a push and a shout out for that Trek Geeks app. It is so wonderful. All the other Trek Geeks Network shows are on there as well as ours. Um, and uh, you get exclusive content on there. Um, so download the app. Have fun with that. Come visit us on the mothership. Hang out with us. And um, till next time, folks, it's been a real blast. Thank you, everybody. Oh, wait, no, I can't go yet. I have important business that I need to take care of. We need to let you listeners know that we have the one, the only, Dose the Anonymous. He is the... He is the baddest engineer in the universe, and uh, he's uh, responsible for all the great music that you hear, uh, as well as being an amazing uh, engineer. So if you need services, um, either music production or engineer services, check out Dose the Anonymous at Dose the anonymous one at gmail.com that's d-o-s-t-h-e-a-n-o-n-y-m-o-u-s the number one at gmail.com and thanks everybody for listening we can't wait to see you next time we're out of here bye Bye. peace love and hair grease peace love and hair grease (laughs) 